All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be showing you my entire John Le Carre thriller novel collection. I have every single novel written by John Le Carre right here before your very eyes. And I will uh, explain a little bit about what John Le Carre does, and uh, then we'll go through each book a little bit one by one. Uh, not talk about them too much, but anyway, um, who is John Le Carre and why should you be reading him? Well, John Le Carre is a thriller novelist who writes some of the greatest thrillers ever put to um, pen to paper, or however that works, typewriter to paper. Maybe he did it on a computer. I don't know how the, he writes his books. But anyway, he has been writing books since the early 1960s, all the way up until he just passed away about a year ago. And this is all of his thriller novels. Now, he is, I consider him like a literary novelist who happens to write thrillers. His books are just literary gems, literary masterpieces. The words and the prose and the, and the, the way he describes things and the situations he comes up with are just gorgeous and beautiful. So let's start from the beginning. We're going to go through each one of these books in order of publication and talk a little bit about each. But let's start with this book here. It's The Pigeon Tunnel, and this is basically a book he put out. It's kind of a little bit of writing advice, some essays on on why he wrote certain of these books, some essays on, because he used to be, John Le Carre used to work as a British spy in the 1950s. Before he became a novelist, he was a British spy himself. That's why his books are so authentically real and chilling and gripping, is because he knows the spy craft. He knows what it was like to be a spy. But these, this is a book full of um, essays and uh, stuff he wrote about all that, along with some writing advice and some of his opinions on the world and politics and things like that. So I got that. It's cool. It's a cool read. Um, we'll put that down here. Now, as we go through these, I'm going to just go through them in the order of publication. He first wrote, um, let's see, he, he wrote a couple of, uh, <clears throat> I'd say about 10 of his novels are about a spy named Smiley, last name Smiley. And so a lot of the books were about Smiley. And, and the, some of the first books were about Smiley, who was just solving simple murder mysteries. Now, um, I have reviewed, I have given detailed reviews on the first. I've rereading, I've read all of these once, some of them twice, but I'm rereading all of these books in order of publication and leaving a review, a, a detailed review of each book on my channel. Now, I've read five of the books so far and left reviews on the channel, so... And I have left a review for Call for the Dead. This is the first book he ever wrote, starring George Smiley, the spy, the British spy, who's just kind of solving a murder mystery in this book. It's very good. His first ever book he wrote. And then he did um, another little murder mystery starring George Smiley, and it is called um, A Murder of Quality. And these, these books he was writing as he, whilst he was a spy in Germany. He was a German, he was a British spy, worked for the British Secret Service in Germany, and he was writing these books on the side. And what happened was some of his colleagues got wind that he was writing these books, and they didn't take kindly to it. So he was really struggling with what he should do. Should he quit the job and be a, he wasn't making a lot of money off of these first two books, though. But then he wrote... The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, which blew up. It became one of the biggest selling novels of all time. And um, one of the greatest spy thrillers of all time, too. Now, this is one of my favorite spy thrillers. It's just so good. But this thing blew up. And at that point, he's, he went from a struggling spy, starving artist, writer, to... Millions and millions of fans and dollars just an overnight became an overnight success. And this is the book where he's like, oh, I can just quit my job as, as with the British Secret Service, and so which he did. And he became a full time writer 
after a spike came in from the cult. <clears throat> and then he wrote um, The Looking Glass War, which is a great spy thriller. Um, the reception for this book was not as warm with the public or the critics as uh, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. But then he sort of rebounded a little bit with um, A Small Town in Germany, another great spy novel set in the 1960s Germany not long after World War II. I just barely read and reviewed this on the channel. And then he had um, this the naive and sentimental lover. He went in a different direction. This is actually just plain literary fiction. There's no spy thriller stuff going on in this. This is just a novel he wrote about sort of a love triangle type of a thing. Um, it's a very literary fiction-esque novel. There's no spy craft in it. It's just about this. This is just kind of a, uh, it's just kind of a odd love story. That's not, it, he didn't like this book. I read it. I read it once and thought there was some interesting, like, stuff in it. But, um, then he, then he, um, he rebounded. So he had the spy that came in from the cold that blew up big. Then he had a couple, then he had a string of three books that people just were kind of like, eh. But then he did another spy novel, Tinker, Taylor, Soldier, Spy, which blew up again as big as the spy who came in from the cold. So the man was back. He was back. And Tinker, Taylor, Soldier, Spy might be my favorite, one, or at least in my top three favorite spy thrillers of all time. And this has been made into miniseries. It's been in, made into movies. It's just an iconic, iconic spy thriller novel. And he followed that up with all the same characters that were in Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. It was such a great hit, such a popular book, that he went back to all the same characters. Again, George Smiley is, is one of his, is in these books too. And this was the uh, Honorable Schoolboy. Spy thriller set in Hong Kong, another one of my favorite spy thrillers of all time. And then he followed that up with another book with the same group of characters from Tinker Taylor. And this is Smiley's People. Again, George Smiley is the main guy. And this was also made into a great miniseries starring Alec Guinness. And Smiley's People, the miniseries, is just fantastic. If you want to read the book and then watch the miniseries with Alec Guinness, it's just dope. And if you don't know who Alec Guinness was, well, he was the original Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then we got The Little Drummer Girl, which continued his success as a great... Um, this is a spy thriller set in the Middle East. It's continued his success. And then another iconic, iconic spy novel... A perfect spy. Just every time I... These books... I'm like going through this right now and thinking, oh my God, each one of them is just fucking perfect. Like, and, they, and, there's, and then there's more and more coming up that I'm, just blow me away. These books blow me away. Like, A Perfect Spy is one of the best novels ever written about the day in, day out inner workings of spy craft and what it's really like to be just a British Secret Service agent. It's not like James Bond, folks. It ain't James Bond. He ain't 007. It ain't pretty girls around every corner and, and, and weird villains and, 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 and narrow escapes. This really nails it down, what a spy is, and just kind of what a lonely existence it can be. And then he gives an even bigger and better with the Russia house. One of just, this is such an intricate, delicate, subtle spy novel about Russia. And it's, that was made into an equally great movie with uh, Sean Connery and I think Michelle Pfeiffer, but it was, it's just a dope book. And then we've got, um, the secret pilgrim. Um, the Night Manager. Oh, holy cow. This Every time I pick one up, I'm like, oh, this is my favorite. No, but it's not. He's got all these books and 
like half of them could be my favorites. The Night Manager is so good. So good. And if you and, there, and there's a great mini series that they made out of the Night Manager too, which is just absolutely good. Oh my gosh. Can't get over. Our game, a, a spy thriller. Um that's a great cover too. I like that cover. That cover is dynamite. And then we have um now, you know, so I said, like, from the 1960s, 70s, 80s, now we're getting into some of the books that he wrote in the 90s, late 90s. The Taylor of Panama, such a good book. And such a great movie with Pierce Brosnan and Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, single and Single. If I remember, this one was not one of my favorites. But then one of my favorites, <laughs> this, again, this... I want to put them all in my top five, but I can't. The Constant Gardener is one of the most gripping, gripping spy novels about Africa that you're ever going to read. And if you want to watch the, uh, I think it was Ralph, or Ray Fiennes. One of the Fiennes brothers did a movie of The Constant Gardener that was just so good. So good. Absolute Friends, another great book. And I think this one came out in a right after 9-11 and the mission song a most wanted man our kind of traitor the a delicate truth that's the gibraltar if you and then um, Legacy of Spies. Agent Running in the Field. And then the last novel that he actually haven't read this one. This is the last one he wrote before he passed away. Silverview. So anyway, those are, that's my entire John Le Carré book collection. And I just suggest everybody read this guy. He's a... Worldwide treasure.